Funding for election 2018 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership association, 88,000 strong in North Dakota, creating real possibilities right here in North Dakota, and by the members of Prairie Public. Welcome to Prairie Public and AARP North Dakota's coverage of election 2018. I'm Matt O'Lean. Tonight, the debate for one of the seats on North Dakota's Public Service Commission. My guests tonight are current Public Service Commissioner, Republican Brian Crocious, and Democratic challenger from Washburn, North Dakota, Casey Buckman. Each candidate will have a one minute opening and closing statement. In between, we'll have topics of discussion based on a coin flip. Casey Buckman, you go first on your one minute opening statement. Thanks, Matt, and I want to thank Prairie Public Broadcasting and AARP for a lot for doing this uh, debate. Um, I believe the PSC needs ability to say no. I, be, I believe that the, as we introduce more infrastructure to our pipelines and, and advance in that way, we need to be careful. I do believe the technology and our infrastructure with our pipelines as we develop them can coexist. Also, I believe that broadband should be readily available as fast as it can be in all areas of the state. There's still some dead pockets, even with uh, telecommunications, we need to work with the private sector in developing areas where as we go further and further into going off our regular telephones and stuff and going into our cell phones, we need to have make sure that there is no dead areas in the, in the area, Matt. Brian Crocious, one minute opening statement. Well, thank you, Matt, and thank you to the staff at Prairie Public as well as AARP for hosting tonight's debate. And I want to especially thank the citizens of North Dakota for the opportunity to serve for the past year and a half as one of your public service commissioners. When I joined the public service commissioner, I came with over 30 years of private sector business experience and a lifetime of ag experience. My priorities have been and continue to be responsible infrastructure development affordable and reliable energy rates, and public safety, including programs like our pipeline safety program. Ultimately, the Public Service Commission is to follow the rule of law and reflect the values and principles that North Dakota citizens have. And I think we've been effective in that, but there's more work to do. Okay, let's get right to the debate topics. My first topic is what are your thoughts on the future wind farms and renewable fuels in North Dakota and how this relates to the existing coal industry and what is the PSC's role in regulating renewables and existing uh, fuels? Brian Crocious, you'll start us off here. The role of a PSC, as mentioned, is to follow the rule of law and to look at the facts and figures that are a part of the record presented in any case and to make sure that we're interpreting that correctly. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth that goes on between any company that is looking to site a project, whether it's a wind farm or whether it's a uh, gas generating plant uh, or a number of other things. Really though, we have to look at the rule of law. We have to be consistent in our decision making process. And really you have to be energy agnostic when you're looking at different projects. I think it's a valid concern in terms of what impact uh, this will have on our coal industry, our lignite industry over the course of time. But again, our role isn't to look at a particular energy type, but to look at an application, decide whether or not it meets the requirements as set forth by the legislature, and then to act accordingly, and the project will either be approved or not approved, but uh, it must meet the requirements, and that's always uh, very, very important. Casey Buckman, response? As one who has worked mainly my, uh, my living in, in the coal industry and fossil fuel industry, I've been a union iron worker for 30 years, I see, I see the writing in the wall that uh, when I've talked to people in, who are my age and stuff, who are in uh, supervisory position in coal plants and, and everything, they, that uh, eventually they'll become obsolete. I'm not against it, but as we go further into our wind, wind and solar area, we need to look at advancements because sooner or later they'll, become, they'll come times, and especially in the coal country where I grew up at, that it'll become too cost, it'll become too uh, cost, cost, cost uh, expensive to work the, the coal, uh, to, to work electricity. I also believe that as we go through there, we need to look at every factor available to do that. Um, we need to 
advance our resources and look at every possible as we look into our renewables and our coal industry. Uh, it'll become a time. I mean, I hate to say it in people, but it's not going to happen right away. People may think that I'm against the coal industry. No, I'm not. But I understand that we have to look forward. If we don't keep looking forward into the future, we'll be left lying in the dark. Hey, Brian Crocious, you want to comment on that kind of a coal versus renewable thing going on? I think there are a couple of elements at play. One is social acceptance. Uh, there is uh, definitely a segment of the population that find renewables very appealing, and that's understandable. Uh, anything we can do to be good stewards of the environment, but the coal industry is still making some significant advances. Uh, the EERC is doing wonderful work up in Grand Forks on coal uh, research, uh, capturing the carbon and then possibly reutilizing that carbon in our oil fields. So coal is an incredibly important part of the North Dakota economy. It's our fifth largest industrial segment, and it contributes over $3.5 billion annually. Uh, it's very, very important to our economy, and I do believe that there is a path forward for our coal, uh, for coal uh, production in North Dakota. They are mine mouth plants, and as such, uh, they're situated very well to be competitive well into the future, in my estimation. Okay, last word on this topic, Casey Buckman. Well, as, as we look into the future, we have to realize that the coal industry is like any industry in, North, in our country. Eventually, they do fade out, like Woolworths or any, any big corporation. And we have to be ready for that. We have to be ready with the renewable energy resources that are available. And as the technology improves, we will definitely have a cheaper, reliable source. But right now, coal is a major player in our, in our state. I make a living off it and everything. And I have nothing against coal whatsoever. But I see the future. And the future is coal is definitely on a downhill slide. Do I want to? Then we have to be worried about what we're going to do in coal country where I live, where we can replace those jobs. We have to be ready for that. You know, and agriculture, we can do that. There's going to be hemp, industrial hemp on the farm bill. And let us work towards that, getting something, a, a, a hemp manufacturing plant, maybe in place of one of these plants that's already in place. Okay, let's move on to our second topic. As you all know, the governor has requested departments to consider 10% budget cuts, including the PSC. One thing that's been talked about is eliminating the grain inspection program. So my question for both of you, is that a good idea or not? And where would you, if elected, start cutting 10% uh, in the PSC budget? Casey Buckman, you start. Well, in the beginning, you said I was a Democrat. And our party is made up of Democrat nonpartisan league. And I'm a nonpartisan leaguer. And what the nonpartisan league has definitely stood for is when the price of grains and the weight of grains back in the early 1900s was, was taken and mainly taken out of control. So I don't think this is a really good thing to do at all. I do believe this is what happened when, our, when the Republicans in, this, in our state have led us down this uh, area and the venue that we we're going. The mismanagement of areas that we have have not been on the Democrats or the nonpartisan league. It has to be on the people who have been in charge of our state for the last 25 years, and that is the Republicans. Why are we making their cuts? Why are we doing that? I don't think the grain and weights should be, should be cut at all. I do think that uh, we should look at other ways to cut, you know, things. But saying cut 10 and 10 percent across the board, how do we get there? wasn't by the nonpartisan league or the Democrat, it was by the Republican Party. Okay, Brian Crocious, response? Uh, whenever you have to cut 10% or the proposal is to cut 10% and actually another 3% in terms of contingency cuts for the next biennium, uh, the budget that agencies are, are looking at, you have to talk about some very difficult things that uh, personally I don't like the idea of cutting the grain. Uh, licensing program. I think it provides a safeguard, not from a price standpoint, but assurances that if something should happen to that particular licensing facility or that uh, elevator, that producers aren't left without adequate compensation. So it, it's a safeguard. It's not a price driving mechanism. I think that's important to uh, differentiate. But we went through, and I'm actually uh, on the commission, obviously, as mentioned, and we're going through a number of different scenarios, and it's not easy. So you're looking at balancing services with operating within our means, and I think it's a very good uh, first step in terms of evaluating the budget. We'll see what the legislature comes up with in terms of targets. 
But uh, these aren't easy conversations to have, but when you're in a leadership position, you have to take a look at the different options that are on the table. And we looked at dozens and dozens of different options. It, uh, it's not an easy task, but it's a part of the job. And we will figure out a way to get to the number. And again, we'll see where it lands once we get into the session. Hey, Casey Buckman, response? Yeah, it's not an easy conversation for them to have because the Republican Party is responsible for what has happened. There's no doubt who you can put the blame to, what has gone on in this state and why we have been, went from a flourishing state in the black and to the red. Yes, they are hard decisions to be made, but how we got there is not because one side was really doing their job as one side wasn't doing their job. And I intend to bring the public back into the Public Service Commission. Okay, Brian Kroosh, just last word on this, and we'll move on to the next topic. Yeah, I think it's important to, that people know that the state is well positioned financially. Uh, revenues are up, oil prices have, have increased once again, and uh, no one could have foreseen the price drop that we did uh, on the crude oil side of the equation. We're seeing the same thing right now in the agricultural sector, and taxable sales uh, related to ag will be down. That's the reality, we're a commodity-driven state, and we have to adjust accordingly when commodity prices swing up and when they swing down. Uh, we're not in the red, we have to have a balanced budget, that's, that's a requirement, it isn't, uh, we can't operate uh, in a deficit, that's, and we have to have a balanced budget at the end of the day. So uh, I think we're taking the right steps to address any potential shortfall, and this is really based not on projections, which are looking very favorable, from a revenue standpoint where we can continue to fund our priorities, but more as if uh, what happens if commodity prices soften once again, are we adequately prepared? And that's really what this is about. And I think it's a very smart and it's a responsible move that we need to take. Okay, let's move to our next topic. Given the track record with Dakota Access Pipeline, are there things that can be done differently in the future when citing these pipelines? And could things have been done differently looking back at DAPL and the controversy that, that ensued? Brian Krocious, you start us off on this one. I don't think there's any question. Whenever you look at any type of a project, whether it's Dakota Access or other projects that we've cited and approved, uh, you can always look back and say, well, if this had been a little bit differently, I think communication is always key. And I think everyone would acknowledge that we can do a better job of communicating. With that said, we have to realize that Dakota Access was cited on private property. It was lawfully cited, it was done correctly, it's a state-of-the-art pipeline, and it's an incredibly important infrastructure project for North Dakota. It's improved the economics in the Bakken by three to three and a half dollars per barrel. And here's one of the most important parts. It has taken a number of trucks off the road, and you can't even begin to imagine the impact that has, the positive impact on public safety, when you get tanker trucks off the road and you're moving crude by pipeline instead. Think about who uses the roads. Kids going to and from school, uh, people going to and from work that live out in the rural areas, uh, families going to and from church. So to be able to uh, take more trucks off the road as more infrastructure and put in, is put in place, improve the economics of one of our top industries in the state, the oil and gas industry, incredibly important. And, uh, and, uh, but you always take away uh, some, some lessons to be learned and, and those can be applied in the future. Casey Buckman, response. Two years later and uh, Dakota Access Pipeline is still a hot, line t hot topic amongst many people, amongst even in, even in people in the trades. Sure, communications could have been better. Sure, it could have been thought out more war was feasible for all. You know, I, I still don't understand why it was moved from north of Bismarck to where it was at. I mean, uh, I do believe that the people who were involved in the protest definitely had a right. As a union man, I do believe that uh, protesting that protesting is part of a right. I also believe that, you know, what happened and how it was handled by our state government was the wrong way to do, it, especially when our governor at that time declared it a state of emergency, which then it turned it into a fiasco. I hope that's a lesson well learned. But I mainly just think that, yes, it did have help with all the, uh, with the oil getting transferred, but communications, there was none thereof. The public really wasn't informed, as far as I know, and I, I plan on making the public well, well informed and working with them, working with the public as we go forward. Brian Krocious, you want to add anything? I would just add that uh, 
The Dakota Access Pipeline is a state-of-the-art pipeline. It's an important piece of infrastructure, not only for North Dakota, but for the United States, and it's one of those key elements that helps push our country towards energy independence, which is very important, not only from a cost standpoint, but knowing that we can produce our own energy here at home, and the fact that North Dakota is playing a key role in that uh, is, uh, I think, very, very impressive. And, uh, you know, again, uh, lessons learned, uh, absolutely, and we'll apply those in the future. And last word, Casey Buckman. North Dakota, let it be a leader amongst all states. That's what we need to do. But let us lead with the, our people. Let us make sure that the profit going out from the pipeline, really, that we get our fair share of it. Let North Dakota and the people they live on rejoice in the land that we live on. We're our agricultural state first, and we always got to remember that. We always have to remember when we have when they speak of commodities in this state, I think of agriculture. I think of the land we live on, the people who sow the land, and as me, a hunter, I think of other places to hunt and stuff. So North Dakota, we have to think of North Dakotans when we say North Dakotan. Okay, let's move on. Our next question comes from our co-sponsor, AARP of North Dakota. As the energy industry continues to evolve, more changes are anticipated as to how energy is delivered in price. Some proposals recently could increase cost to consumers. How would you, as members of the PSC, make sure uh, that consumers are paying fair rates? Uh, Casey Buckman, you go first. Well, recently what I've read and stuff on, on the PSC board is that MDU and Otter Taylor are asking for price increase. But I thought in 2017, the president and a tax bill, give them a great big tax bill. And I thought they were supposed to put that to the people that they serve. I mean, that's, there's one instance where I'd have to vote, vote no because they've already got their tax bill, uh, tax break. Uh, as we go forward, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I wish people would talk about something like net metering in this state where an individual could actually put their own, you know, get their own personal touch into uh, the, the program of renewable energy. And net metering, you don't hear about it, not out of the PSC, not out of any co-ops, but it, I wish people would check into it. It's basically a two-way meter. And yeah, it does cost a little bit on, on, on your part, but it's you get to do your own part as an individual, help out the economy and the environment. Brian Crocious, response. We talk about reliable energy, but uh, reasonably priced energy, whether it's electricity or gas, uh, to the home is incredibly important, particularly for low-income households. Uh, where a two or a three dollar difference per month means a lot. And I understand that and that's something that I've advocated for during the conversations that we have with utility companies. Uh, the recent uh, TCJA, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which was passed I believe on December 22nd, uh, introduced early November, uh, is essentially going to offset an increase uh, on the recent rate case that we had with MDU that was closed last July in 2017. Nobody likes when rates go up, and I'm very, very uh, sensitive to any type of a rate increase for reasons mentioned. But at the same time, you have to look at where some of those dollars go when the rates do go up. For example, on a current uh, uh, case, we're talking about replacing aging gas line infrastructure, distribution infrastructure, and you have to take that into account because public safety does come into play. So reliable service, safe service is very important, uh, keeping increases to a minimum. And one other thing I would add, we asked all companies after the TCJA passed to come back to us with what that will mean to consumers. And with all of them, it appears, because we still have to, to get through the cases and close the cases, that that will grant relief to consumers in terms of the rates they pay. So we're expecting this money, and I personally expect uh, the majority of this money to go back to the consumer uh, with perhaps a small portion, a very small portion, that might be put into infrastructure projects that promote reliability and safety. Jay Casey Buckman. People are still waiting. I mean, uh, waiting on that. My opponent said that he expects, that is nothing for sure, that that money will go back on that. That's one thing that we have to look on. He expects that to happen. Whether or not it does, that's yet another question. I just want people to realize that they voted to, I mean, 
They asked for an increase after a tax bill that said that they give them all they wanted to. And yet, here we go. They, you know, an increase is an increase, no matter how you look at it. And they had to pass something else to give them, a, to get that money back to them that they're expected to pay. Again, it, it's expected. Okay, Brian Croce's last word on this topic. Sure. We have, uh, these are very complex calculations. To think that a TCJ uh, tax Cut and Jobs Act can pass, and then that you can immediately turn around. Uh, one thing I pride, uh, very proud of is the fact that we operate with a very limited staff, uh, significantly less than other states, and they get it right. So it's not always about speed. We're moving as quickly as we can, but we are making good progress, and I expect a settlement to be out uh, on several of the cases in the very near future. And it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's going to happen. And one other point, uh, when you're looking at all the utility workers in the state, the line workers uh, that work for the investor-owned utilities that we regulate, when you look at the employees at these organizations, uh, they expect to make a little bit more as well. So this all goes into how we factor in rates, how we look at it. And the TCJA, again, bringing some of that money or the majority of that money, frankly, back to the uh, consumer, it's happening. And uh, I think we're doing very good work on that and took the initiative to make sure that that would happen. Okay, last topic, we've got about two minutes before we get to closing statements and very, very interesting question, simple question, oil and energy industries, more regulation, less regulation. What do you think? Brian Crocious, you go first. I think you always have to have a level of regulation, but you also want to make sure that we're attracting companies that want to do business in North Dakota. Ultimately, we look at reasons why we live in North Dakota, but we also talk about youth that tend to leave the state, and we have to create opportunities for them. So developing our natural resources in a responsible way is critical because it's not only about today, but it's about our future, and how do we create opportunities for our youth to stay, work, and raise their families in North Dakota? We have a great opportunity ahead of us, and I believe you can balance the regulatory obligation that companies must have, need to have, uh, to promote safe extraction of our resources, to make sure we return the land to as good or better condition than when it was first uh, uh, utilized for oil development or coal mining, whatever it might be, uh, wind development. We want to make sure that we're taking those steps to make sure that we uh, create an environment where we're promoting growth in a responsible, sound way and holding companies you accountable. Casey Buckman in for response because we're getting short of time. Your response on Regul regulation, less or more? Regulations are definitely needed. You know, it's the land we live on, the air we breathe. I'm a firm believer in history. I'm a firm believer, and when we look back at history when we had le less regulations, what has happened to the land, the air, the water that we do. We need these regulations. To me, regulations mean life for everybody. Okay, uh, time for closing statements. Uh, Brian Crocious, you go first. One minute, closing statement. Well, thank you again, Matt, and Prairie Public and AARP for the opportunity to be here. And thank you to the citizens of North Dakota. These forums are very important. You get to hear the issues. You get to hear where the different candidates stand on the issues. And I appreciate that opportunity to express my views. We live in a fantastic state, and we can continue to develop our resources, grow our economy, and keep North Dakota healthy, not just today, but for years into the future. It's important that we keep looking ahead, making sure we're taking care of the present, and again, I really appreciate the opportunity to serve the citizens of the state in my current role as your public service commissioner. Okay, Casey Buckman. Matt, again, I, also, I too also would like to thank you and Prairie Public for uh, allowing us to debate here on different sides. You know, I'm an Art Link throwback. I was born and raised in coal country. I've seen what responsible leadership working across the aisle has done, and has done for our state. It's proof. I grew up in a little town called Stanton, and it's right smack dab in the middle of coal country. Until all that stuff come around and Art Link and all his people he surrounded him, I mean, it was just they were doing everything they want to. I truly believe that we, 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 we do live in a great state, but we also want to make sure that when this landscape is quiet again, that we, we have done everything in our purpose. You know, we live in 
a great state, a great mind, great individual minded people we have here. And again, I want to thank you. I want to thank Brian. And I want to thank everybody out there in North Dakota for giving me the opportunity as I travel across here to meet you. Thanks. Well, thanks to both of you for being here, Casey Buckman and Brian Crocious. I think this is an important debate and it's good for the viewers and listeners to hear from both candidates. I thank you for being here. And I want to thank you, the viewers and listeners, for watching Prairie Public and AERP North Dakota's coverage of Election 2018, this Public Service Commission debate. And remember, Election Day is November 6th, so either vote on the 6th or do early voting. So long. Funding for election 2018 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership association, 88,000 strong in North Dakota, creating real possibilities right here in North Dakota, and by the members of Prairie Public.